Well, hello, everyone. Cynthia Tomain with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Where we're going to take an, uh, where Russell Rhodes is going to be introducing the CBOE Bitcoin futures. We're very pleased to have Russell along with us here today. So, what I'm going to do is uh, um, now let's uh, pass the controls over to Russell, and we'll get started here. Okay, Russell, if you could take it away. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all. Everybody bear with me one second. Three, two, one. All right. I believe everybody should be able to see my uh, screen that says Bitcoin and SIBO Bitcoin XBT futures. Uh, Cynthia and I, you see it? We're good? All right. Where's that? And, uh, and C Cynthia, whoops, Cynthia and I have been doing webcasts. For goodness gracious, how long have we been doing webcasts together? I think we're eight years or longer now. We're eight years or so, and this is the first time we've done one afternoon, and I think that's what the issue is. So moving forward now. <laughs> We're just not doing it at the right time. So uh, before I get going, I am here for educational purposes only. I'm going to talk about Bitcoin a little bit, uh, talk about uh, the futures contracts that we have offered uh, on beginning uh, the middle of last month. It's been a very exciting launch around here. It's really exciting to get involved in a new asset class. SIBO, uh, for the most part, is known for S&P 500 index options, VIX, VIX futures and options, uh, and a little bit lesser extent, Russell 2000 index options. Uh, this this adds a new area to what we are uh, what we what we offer at CBO Global Markets. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on Bitcoin. I, I think everybody is is somewhat familiar with Bitcoin, but uh, there might be a few takeaways. I'll talk about why we chose to get involved in the uh, cryptocurrency market, and then spend a spend a couple of minutes talking about Gemini, who is a, uh, Gemini is a trust company that it, that operates under New York banking laws. And they actually uh, are, are uh, going to be doing something with interactive brokers in a few weeks. So I'll mention that as well. Then we'll get into the Bitcoin contracts that we offer here at SIBO. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Bitcoin price action that we've had so far. Uh, in a couple of days, we will be at one month uh, we'll have a one month anniversary for Bitcoin, and I'm, I'm probably going to do an extensive blog where I just kind of recap uh, what's happened price wise within Bitcoin. Uh, give you guys some resources that you can move um, that that you can uh, look up your own information with. And if there are any questions toward the end, I'm always happy to answer those. And then my contact information is on here. Uh, this is being recorded. We've already gotten a couple of questions about whether or not this is being recorded. Uh, also, uh, I know we're scheduled for a full hour. Uh, I like to leave an awful lot of time for questions. So I, I doubt that we go that full hour. If you're watching this as a recording and you've got questions, that's why I give you my email address. Just be a little bit patient with the with with the response time um, and and just got a question have we launched Bitcoin options we have not launched Bitcoin options and I haven't heard what the uh, what the plan is on that one I kind of anticipated that question uh, I think everybody's familiar with Bitcoin it came out uh, it, it was initially introduced in a paper by Satoshi uh, who we don't know who he she or they are uh, we, we I do know that they have a lot of Bitcoin the, the rumor is is that Satoshi, if they did, if he, she, or, or the group that comprises the person Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, if they haven't sold any of the Bitcoin that, that they mined, uh, he's got 980,000 Bitcoin, and you can uh, get your Excel spreadsheet out and figure out what that makes his personal um, his personal amount of or the group's personal amount of Bitcoin worth. Uh, keep in mind that that. that Bitcoin was introduced, uh, really it was con conceived while we were going through the great financial crisis. And uh, a big part of the motivation was why, you know, why does the government have so much control over money? What might be a, uh, a good alternative? So the core idea was a de decentralized financial system uh, that's not controlled by a few people. That it's, it's actually controlled by uh, consensus. Now, 
Bitcoin is not a currency. Now, I, you know, we could debate this one uh, all day long. Uh, Bitcoin has actually, with with in the United States, uh, the CFTC has actually declared Bitcoin a commodity. Uh, and and actually, one of the uh, analogies that we use an awful lot when we're talking about Bitcoin is gold, because the the, the way that the uh, that, that uh, Bitcoin is has been structured in the way that it is released or or awarded to different miners is similar to you know extracting uh, gold or some other commodity out of the ground. Um, you know, we also use the term digital currency and cryptocurrency, but the reason that we're able to trade futures contracts on it and the reason that it is uh, that, that those futures contracts are regulated by the CFTC or monitored by the CFTC uh, is because of, of that declaration of being a commodity. Now, as time goes along, new Bitcoin is are awarded to the miners and the number of Bitcoin that will be awarded, it, it continues to diminish. I, I think uh, right now we're at 12 and a half, about every 10 minutes goes out to uh, somebody that's helping with the blockchain and helping maintain that ledger. Uh, and the number will get cut to 6.25 in a few years and eventually it will keep getting cut in half and it should top out uh, at 21 million sometime in the year 2140. Uh, I know that, that we are all living longer, but I'm, I, I doubt that anybody listening on the webcast is gonna be around for the uh, eventual topping out of Bitcoin. Uh, now, uh, you know, I actually, one of the reasons I'm speaking to you guys today, not just because, uh, SIBO was the first uh, first exchange to launch, bit, launch Bitcoin futures, but I actually was able to travel with uh, the guys that run Gemini and learned an awful lot about, the, about Bitcoin from them. And one of the common questions that I got or that they got and I you know, was participating a little bit in uh, was why would anybody accept Bitcoin? And Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's there's a very low transaction fee. Uh, in fact, uh, it's it's much lower than if you accept a credit card. And I think any of us that maybe live in a big city and we're cash short sometimes, if you uh, go to a convenience store, uh, often they don't want you using a credit card to buy a, a single Diet Coke or a pack of gum or something like that because uh, the transaction fee basically uh, gobbles up all of the potential profits, like they want a, a minimum $5 purchase or something like that. Uh, that might not necessarily be true if they were using Bitcoin. Uh, also, is it, with Bitcoin, uh, you can, you're basically accepting the same form of payment from anybody uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, it also, uh, it, and this was, uh, this was the example I hate to steal from uh, the, the Gemini people too much, but uh, they, they actually would talk about if it's a Friday afternoon, this was an example they used, or if it's a Friday afternoon and you're in New York and you want to wire uh, uh, some money to somebody in Singapore, we were in Singapore, so they were using that example. Uh, they said the way that the system is set up right now, it might actually be quicker to get a bag of money and get on a plane. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that, transferring money via Bitcoin is much quicker. It's almost as easy as sending an email. Another example that I that, that I find um, maybe doesn't resonate with all of us, but if you're in a couple of non-developed countries, it can take weeks to, um, to, to wire money from Ecuador to Thailand. It might go through a couple of mini centers. You might have uh, you know, might have money, you know, a, a big percentage of that taken away. Uh, it, it's a very useful uh, system for people in countries that don't have fully developed, uh, fully developed banking markets. And also Bitcoin, uh, you can convert it for a for any currency that you choose. Uh, I see a lot of questions coming in, so what am I actually gonna do? I'm gonna run through the presentation and then start hitting the questions, because um, we're getting a lot of them. And I'll get all over the place, and then the hour will run up. Uh, now the blockchain, I think everybody's heard of blockchain. It's the technology behind uh, Bitcoin. It's, it's actually uh, a ledger that keeps up with all Bitcoin transactions. Uh, and, Every Bitcoin transaction since the inception and and the uh, Bitcoin was 
uh, conceived in a paper in fall of, I think maybe even on Halloween of 2008, uh, the, the Bitcoin network or the, the software was actually launched on January 3rd, 2009, which uh, was nine years ago, uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, the, the revolutionary aspect of blockchain is there's no central point of failure uh, so it's you know theoretically impossible to bring uh, the Bitcoin network as a whole down typically when you hear of issues or, or potential hacking issues or somebody having their Bitcoin taken away from them it's it, it happened on something that is not uh, on the, the blockchain it might be on one of the different uh, one of the many different exchanges that are out there. Uh, most people have been focusing on blockchain for financial applications. Uh, maybe that's, you know, just maybe I believe that because this is the industry that I work in. Uh, but uh, there really are some great potential uses uh, within logistics, inventory management, uh, making sure something gets from point A to point B and um, tracking it on some sort of blockchain uh, network might, might be a future use as well. So I think blockchain will expand an awful lot behind uh, just being Bitcoin. Um, now, Bitcoin mining, we hear about that an awful lot. It, it basically means um, that more Bitcoin has been added to the network. In fact, uh, notice that there's a big B for Bitcoin and that, that stands for the network and the little B for Bitcoin actually stands for what we would think of as, if I'll, I'll just call it a currency for a second, as the currency. Uh, if, and you need miners to be operating within the Bitcoin ecosystem to make sure that the, the ledger is being kept up with and that all the tra transactions are being kept up with as well. Uh, mining has, uh, it's been getting the reputation as being very resource intensive. And, and that just means that if you are running a Bitcoin mining operation, uh, you will, you know, you will be uh, consuming an awful lot of power. Uh, and uh, you, you've seen, I, I've seen things, uh, you know, cool stats like every Bitcoin transaction uh, will consume as much power as 40,000 homes in a day or, or things like that. Um, however, if you start to look at Bitcoin within an, inst within a, um, within a, an industrial power consumption uh, lens, it's not as it, it's not as big of a deal uh, as it is when you look at it relative to uh, consumer power consumption. Uh, the the extraction of gold every year actually uses more power than uh, the Bitcoin network does. So on an industrial basis, uh, if you classified Bitcoin that way, uh, the, the power uh, the power consumption is not as big of a deal. Um, you know, as big of a deal as, as you might um, as you might believe hearing it from the press. Um, now, as Bitcoin as the Bitcoin mining has come along, it's it's been uh, an interesting um, advancement in technology that specifies along with the uh, with with adding power to the network or being able to um, solve the cryptology that involves being awarded Bitcoin. Uh, it started out, everybody was just using typical PCs. Uh, and then uh, it was discovered that using uh, video cards does a better job for mining than uh, typical CPUs. In fact, they're uh, one of the smartest uh, Bitcoin entrepreneurs I know is an eighth grader down the street from me. He, he figured out which video cards were the best ones for mining. He bought a bunch of PCs, stripped out the, the video cards, sold them for more than he paid for the PCs, and then resold the other PC parts as well. Uh, sometimes they say the, uh, you know, like the guy that made the most money in Vegas was the one that put the first gas station there, not necessarily the first, uh, first um, casino. Now it's it's moved beyond the video cards and actually uh, specific hardware and chips are being created just to, uh, you know, basically just to uh, mine Bitcoin. Uh, and they uh, they need a lot more, a lot more power and they also generate an awful lot of heat uh, up around the Arctic Circle. If you can get a lot of power, uh, you probably can set up a nice Bitcoin mining operation. Uh, and then, as mentioned, when you hear about 
uh, the security issues relative to Bitcoin. It's not really the blockchain that that is having the issues. It really is the uh, the, the different exchanges maybe have a security flaw. Uh, whenever Bitcoins have been lost to hackers and you hear uh, these sorts of stories, it really is is something that has been built to link into the bet. Bitcoin network that's been compromised, and not necessarily the um, not necessarily the, uh, the the blockchain network because the Bitcoin blockchain has never been uh, successfully hacked. And if you believe if you believe the experts, it shouldn't be either uh, because it's decentralized. There's no central point of failure, and uh, there's very strong cryptography. Uh, I've heard uh, numbers thrown out there. If you were trying to run uh, some sort of uh, random number generator to try to uh, steal somebody's uh, steal somebody's uh, crypto key and steal their bitcoins, that it would take uh, possibly as much time as we've got left for the sun before it um, burns out. Uh, so um, <laughs> the uh, the individual wallets are protected by a private key and the uh, numbers and digits that are behind that are so complex that uh, it, it's very, very difficult. It, it, the, the possibility of um, somebody hacking that number, uh, it's, uh, it, it, I've heard in the million, if you're running all the computing power in the world, uh, millions of years, I've heard things like that as well. So where I work, the CBOE, or CBOE Global Markets now, uh, we have, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have, uh, we probably brought what, what is arguably the most successful new listed derivative to market in the last decade when we launched VIX Futures and Options. Uh, and uh, we feel that uh, we have a research department here that is continuously uh, looking at uh, different ways to utilize the, uh, the the volatility space or the index option space in the um, in, in the uh, equity derivatives ecosystem. Um, so we felt that we we did have the expertise to launch something new, and it's gone pretty well so far. Uh, also. Uh, we have actually partnered with Gemini, who is a uh, – the Gemini Trust is a regulated trust company. They, they operate under the banking laws in the state of New York, uh, and working with them as opposed to uh, a less uh, – one of the, the Bitcoin exchanges that doesn't have to go through as much of a uh, regulatory uh, process – uh, gave us a lot of confidence to uh, to par partner up with Gemini. Um, most people will be familiar with Gemini as being, uh, or will be familiar with uh, the individuals that set Gemini up. It's Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss. Uh, most people are familiar with them from uh, from fa from uh, having the idea behind Facebook. Uh, they actually are now heavily involved in the cryptocurrency space, and uh, you know they they have put an awful lot of work into putting together a regulated market for spot Bitcoin. Uh, and they would, they'll even say that it's, you know, setting up a New York trust is not exactly the most exciting thing in the world, but they have a strong belief that uh, if, if we're going to see Bitcoin succeed, uh, it does need to be done in a properly regulated environment. And Gemini as a New York trust uh, is a uh, is is that regulated market, and just before we got on, uh, Cynthia let me know that uh, Cameron and Tyler are going to be doing a webcast with Interactive Brokers. Uh, I think next month, but I will leave that to her when um, when I finish up. If you want to learn more about Gemini, uh, feel free to visit their website, Gemini.com. It talks about their daily settlement process. Uh, and uh, gives a better description of that entity than I could. Uh, it, but it, it really is, um, uh, you know, it's just like a bank, but it's just like a bank for digital assets and um, for uh, getting in and out of cryptocurrencies. And right now they are involved in um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, and I believe uh, the last time that that I had a meeting with them, uh, they said that they are looking at other markets to get involved in, but they didn't give any hint whatsoever as to what that would be. 
Now, SIBO launched the USD futures contracts and, and uh, under the ticker XBT uh, back on December 11th. We did this in on a, um, a Sunday evening and uh, everything went off fairly smoothly. Uh, been a lot of uh, the first week or two that we had Bitcoin futures trading. Uh, there was a lot of volatility. Um, it seems that that market has started to calm down. In fact, one of the things that I'm going to do uh, when I, I do a first month review in a couple of days is take a look at uh, the day-to-day -day price volatility in Bitcoin and how that has, uh, how it seems to have uh, died down. The volatility has died down uh, since uh, our futures market and of course the CME futures markets got launched. I think there was a lot of anticipation into both of those launches. Um, we had customers, we, we do events where we talk to different trading firms and we had trading firms say that they were interested in derivatives based on Bitcoin and, and the futures contracts are the first in what will probably be uh, a suite of different types of financial instruments that derive their value from Bitcoin. Uh, I've seen questions flying by about uh, the uh, potential exchange traded notes or exchange traded funds. <laughs> Uh, there are lots of entities that have filed to offer those sorts of things. Uh, nobody's uh, gotten an approval quite yet. Uh, there's uh, thoughts behind doing options or maybe options on futures at some point as well. Uh, we're still seeing uh, the volume for the Bitcoin futures uh, increase uh, slowly but surely. And you want to have a, you know, a pretty liquid market, a uh, pretty liquid underlying market before you maybe consider um, um, adding options. And uh, when I say a liquid market, I know that the spot Bitcoin market trades like crazy, but the listed derivative market needs to pick up a little bit as well. And and the trend right now is is that we should get there. So the official name is SIBO Bitcoin XBT Futures. Again, we listed on December 11th. Uh, the futures the the core symbol is XBT. Uh, we have not had a settlement yet. We will have a settlement on, uh, I believe, the 17th. I know that date for sure is it toward the end of this presentation. Uh, our contract is one uh, XBT future for each Bitcoin. Now, when we first conceived this, when we were first talking about this, it was August and Bitcoin was around 4,000 bucks. And we got a lot of pushback on that. Well, that's going to be too small of a contract. Um, I don't think it's too small of a contract now. Uh, the minimum price ticks, and it, it's 10 points. Uh, and uh, I just I look at the quote every once in a while. Very often, it's uh, uh, the minimum price interval on a on a individual future is 10 points. Uh, that spread seems to be 10, maybe 20, 30 points at times. But it's been pretty narrow for. A, considering it's a brand new um, market and we're still uh, working on the volume there. If you want to trade the futures against each other, which we do see some trades in this area, um, the, uh, the, the minimum price tick for a uh, future spread or for maybe like selling the January future and buying the March future, uh, the, the minimum price interval is only a penny for that. So you will see um, prices for the Bitcoin futures at times that that don't end in a 10, that don't end in a multiple of 10. And that means it was a leg of uh, one of the one of the spreads. Um, we this is what we've been approved for. This is not what we're offering right now. We can we can actually offer four near term weekly futures uh, the next three continuous months, which, which is what we have right now, and then also quarterly. If we offered all of those, and again, this is if we were offering all of those, we would have Bitcoin futures expiring the next three, the next four Wednesdays. Uh, and then we would also have February, March, June, September, and December. Uh, we don't have all of those right now. We only have January, February, and March futures contracts. Uh, I did see a question about extended trading hours. We do trade the Bitcoin futures basically from Sunday at 5 p.m. Chicago time until 3.15 in the afternoon on Friday. There's a 15 minute uh, uh, break in there uh, every afternoon from 3.30 in the afternoon Chicago, or 3.15 
in the afternoon Chicago time, excuse me, until 3.30, uh, and then we reopen for the next day's session. Uh, the standard contract settlement date is going to be two days prior to the third Friday. Uh, so uh, a week from this coming Friday is the third Friday, uh, which means next Wednesday will be the first uh, Bitcoin settlement and the Bitcoin futures contracts will settle based on the 4 p.m. New York time Gemini auction contract, uh, Gemini auction process. And their auction process is very transparent. They do this every day. They actually tweet out what the value is. And um, the, the way the process works, uh, beginning at 3.50 New York time, uh, they start indicating what the price will be, and they, are soli they solicit orders every minute up until 3.59, and then every 15 seconds until 4 o'clock, and then they have, a, uh, they have a cross every day at 4 o'clock. And that crossing price is going to be that, that that's that's actually what I use for the daily settlement price for some of the charts that I'm going to show. Uh, it's what I'm using for the price action analysis of the spot because it's a single price at four o'clock each day. It's for something that trades 24/7. Coming up with a closing price is um, you know it's I, I think this is as good as any, especially because our futures settle into this um, and. <clears throat> So far, so we will see the first Bitcoin futures uh, settlement, the January contract settlement on the 4 p.m. Um, Gemini auction on January 17th. Now, um, derivatives activity uh, yeah, has focused mostly on the underlying market, uh, but we are seeing uh, with the Bitcoin uh, futures launch, uh, we have seen an increase in the type of participants that are involved in, in the Bitcoin market. There are professional trading firms in Chicago that, that are now uh, trading in cryptocurrencies that weren't before the futures were available. Uh, as you see more market participants in any market, you tend to see a more efficient price discovery and a little bit less volatility. Uh, that hasn't been the early case here. But uh, like everything else with respect to Bitcoin, I think uh, the, the fact that there was a lot of anticipation going into uh, the launch of the futures and there were people trading into the launch, that that may have created a little bit of post-launch um, um, volatility. Uh, as we see more ARBs come, more people trading the futures against Bitcoin, uh, we probably will see uh, less um uh, price dislocations between the cash markets, between the futures and the cash, or maybe even other cash markets as well. And I know from watching some of the major exchanges, their prices, uh, they appear to be a lot more in line now than they may have been or may have appeared uh, back in October and November when we really started paying attention to uh, Bitcoin around here. Uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're trading January, February, and March contracts, and these are the, uh, the expiration dates for each of those. And again, the settlement is going to be based on that 4 p.m. Eastern Gemini auction price. And um, it, it, I, I'm certain that that January 17th settlement, because it's going to be the first one, is going to be watched very closely. Uh, it's, uh, it's something I'm looking forward to. I think there are a lot of traders that, that want to see how the settlement goes. And, and once we have a smooth settlement, I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, an even, even bigger increase in uh, a faster growth in the volume than we're, we're already seeing. Uh, I pulled this chart, uh, I, I started to pull this chart and not say what date it was, uh, but I found this kind of interesting when I started looking at the Bitcoin price action. Uh, and when we were doing the road show with, uh, with, with the guys from Jim and I, one of the quotes that would get used every once in a while was, I think we're in the 20th Bitcoin bubble. Well, this is the 2013 Bitcoin price action. And if I didn't have numbers or dates or anything else on there, uh, a lot of you would probably guess that that was this past year because they look an awful lot alike, just a different scale. Uh, there, there have been these explosive periods of growth for the price of Bitcoin. Um, we've actually, uh, we've, we've kind of uh, fallen into a range over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see if uh, if we just hit a plateau or you know if there there's some further weakness. Uh, you know, as being a new market, it's very difficult to uh, 
give any sort of credible analysis as to where you think Bitcoin is going. Uh, it takes a takes a smart man to admit what he doesn't know, and where it's going next is anybody's guess as well as mine. I think the acceptance of the technology and the use of the technology is something that'll be here for the rest of our lives, but uh, what goes on with Bitcoin pricing is anybody's guess. Now, like most futures contracts, and this is just for the, the price action in December, uh, for most future, like most futures contracts, uh, the volume for Bitcoin futures really has been concentrated in the January contracts. Now, since uh, the beginning of this year, uh, we're actually starting to see <clears throat> we're starting to see the uh, the volume creep out to the farther months, and it's actually, and in fact, here's the uh, this is actually the open interest. It says daily volume at the top, but this should say open interest. Uh, and notice that the March open interest seems to be expanding faster than um, the February. And I think that is, well, I'll show curves in just a minute, but I think that uh, we've started to see the January open interest uh, move lower. In fact, it's moved lower every day in 2018, except for yesterday, but it didn't grow as fast as the March contract yesterday. So I think because the, the, the curve has, has really flattened as this market has started to catch on, uh, I think people are skipping February and going right to March. Uh, if they are using the Bitcoin futures as a uh, proxy to be long or short uh, spot Bitcoin. Uh, but we continue to see, in fact, uh, I, my Twitter address is at the end and I put an updated version of this chart out on Twitter just before we, uh, before we started this webcast today. Uh, this was the, cur the settlement curve on December 15th. Uh, this was when uh, we were the only market in town. Uh, it was a little bit, uh, you know, February was at a discount. March was at a little bit of a premium to, uh, to spot Bitcoin. On the 22nd, the 22nd was probably, well, it was, it's not even a probably. Um, the Bitcoin came under a lot of pressure on the 22nd. In fact, I, at one point, on the uh, on December 22nd, I think Bitcoin was under 12,000. Uh, it did recover some, finished the day around 14.4. Uh, that was also, and I I know I drive people nuts when I do this, but <clears throat> the 22nd is also this big volume day uh, where we did about almost 14,000 contracts uh, based on the price activity. And in fact, uh, yesterday was the second biggest volume up in uh, around 5,500 or so. Uh, but you can see that the uh, it's really interesting. Uh, typically, when um, typically when VIX sells off, the futures are at a premium, and this is the day that we had the biggest sell off in Bitcoin futures. And lo and behold, the the futures actually uh, finished the day at somewhat of a discount. Now it, it's just a, interesting to see how the price activity uh, and now. It, it, kind of works itself out over time. And we were hardly changed week over week uh, between the 22nd and the 29th. But, uh, and I'm sitting here wishing that I'd put both these curves on the same uh, on the same slide right now. But the price change for Bitcoin between the 22nd and the 29th, these were both Friday closes. Uh, there was very little change, but look at what the futures did. Uh, the January, February, March futures actually rebounded and moved up into uh, Basically, uh, if, if those of you that are familiar with VIX, if, if I just showed this, you would think I was showing you VIX in the first three months if it didn't have numbers and names and everything on it. Uh, the curve has flattened an awful lot since. Uh, I think yesterday, January might have closed um, less than $50 above spot. It really, the, the futures really have fallen into uh, a very flat type of curve. And in fact, I'll, uh, I'll tweet out updated curves this afternoon as well. I just, uh, just got to put them on, on the Twitter. Now, one of the things that seems to have happened uh, over time uh, is it used to be we were seeing the, uh, the bid side versus the spot at somewhat of a premium. And I, I just put these percentages in here uh, assuming you know that that you're paying full price for a Bitcoin and and you're uh, if if you're trading the futures you're having to put up 100% as well uh, and you can see a little bit farther out that there's a, a little bit more of a premium uh, for the um, March contract or for the uh, 
um, sorry, for the January contract when the spot had moved down, then when it was uh, then it was when it was at a little bit higher price, uh, the February contract has a little bit more of a premium, just a little bit more of a premium, not a whole lot, and the uh, the March contract. Uh, especially in early trading in the first couple of weeks, was trading at a much bigger premium. Uh, that premium seems to have shrunk over time. This is the middle of the week, uh, the second full week of, of Bitcoin futures trading. Those numbers have uh, they've, they've dissipated an awful lot. And again, uh, I'm just throwing a percentage number based on uh, you know two times the spot, uh, just to, to have a, a common reference there. Uh, the premium did. It's interesting. On the 20th, uh, the premium was pretty high. By the 22nd, uh, the uh, the futures actually went at a discount. Um, I think, you know, part of the academic work that I've done in the past has to do with looking at new listed derivative markets, and there's always this initial period where the way that they're going to trade or the way that they trade uh, kind of works itself out through market forces, uh, and I I think that's that's really what our experience was through December. Um, the, the very flat curve has held up for most of uh, January. We haven't had a real Bitcoin volatility event yet, where uh, we had another big sell-off. Uh, when we you know, when we do, we'll see if uh, if we go back into backwardation or not. Uh, the other thing is we'll start to as we start to get data, we'll be able to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> Take a look at, uh, do the futures do a good job uh, predicting the direction of Bitcoin? Do the futures overreact in different directions? Um, there, You can use VIX futures as a guide to where the market thinks VIX is going. We might, uh, in time, be able to develop some analysis with the, with the Bitcoin futures as well. Um, so you know, we're about a month into the Bitcoin futures trading. We continue to see uh, the volume and the open interest grind higher. Uh, the new trading vehicles, um, you know, we didn't see decent volume in VIX futures for almost three years. We're seeing very good volume in uh, Bitcoin futures when you compare those two different markets. Uh, the contracts appear, there do appear to be some trades that are going on uh, versus uh, spot. Uh, there are a few calendar trades I've seen. I don't know if they've been rolling transactions or, or actually outright trades, um, but <clears throat> That's a you know another method of using these that that I think is kind of in development, uh, and we're all going to be paying attention a week from tomorrow because uh, we're going to get our first settlement on the afternoon of January 17th. So um, we actually have put out a really nice uh, free free is a good good price. Uh, really not our, the Options Institute, my former employer, has put together a really nice. Uh, how to trade Bitcoin futures uh, um, piece that you can download for PDF if you visit the SIBO.com uh, slash Bitcoin. Uh, they also put out a weekly newsletter talking about the trading activity and any any relevant news. Um, the SIBO Futures Exchange, you can actually, from the SIBO Futures Exchange, uh, you can get the historical daily closing data for all the different futures contracts. Uh, the, the charts that I put together today uh, the end of day charts. I just got the data from from that place. And again, if you want to learn more about Gemini, uh, not only are they uh, can you visit their website, but uh, Cynthia has managed to uh, to score a webinar with uh, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss uh, in the next few weeks, which I'm very impressed. Uh, and I I will be on that one as well because. Uh, they uh, they really know their stuff with respect to this market, and if you're skeptical, and I'll be honest, I was skeptical about the long-term viability of Bitcoin uh, when I first went on the roadshow with them. Uh, they are great, and they're, they're, they do a great job of um, of uh, squashing squashing people's fears as well. So, uh, and finally, there is my email address and my uh, Twitter is my full name, Russell Rhodes, uh, just full name, at Russell Rhodes. Uh, so I'm going to start working backwards through the questions that we have. Uh, other cryptocurrencies, are we planning derivatives for them? Uh, absolutely. We are. We totally are planning on um, 
goodness, I'm having trouble reading the questions that are up here. Um, but yeah, we are we are taking a look at other cryptocurrency markets. I mean, honestly, uh, we work with Gemini and they trade Ethereum. I would think that Ether would would possibly be next, but don't you know? Don't say Cibo says that's next. Um, I am intentionally kept away from those conversations uh, because um, I just am. So, but that would be my guess is that Ether would probably be the next one. Uh, I got a question about. Uh, there was a backlog of transactions and transaction fees rose in the tens of dollars for a single transaction, irrespective of the, the um, amount. Um, I assume that's on the um, that's on the the. Excuse me. Sorry, I am. OK, um, I was having trouble reading questions. I was having to read them one at a time or one line at a time. And now I've got everything in front of me. Um, I'm not really familiar with uh, I know that there that the, the Bitcoin network has been experiencing uh, some backlogs. And I know there's talk about uh, doing something with the technology to um, <clears throat> to to maybe, um, you know, try to streamline the technology, but um, I'm not really familiar with the transfer fees on the spot Bitcoin um, with the spot Bitcoin prices or the spot, uh, the transaction fees with spot Bitcoin. So um, the relation to Bitcoin is one to one. Will it increase in the future? Perhaps one to two. Um, I don't think so. I think the one to one is, is something that we're very happy with, especially with the current price. Um, we're doing much better volume than the uh, um, than the, the the CMEs contract, which is five to one. I mean, that's a pretty big contract. And then also, um, I do know that that uh, relative to other futures markets, because of the volatility in Bitcoin, uh, the um, the margins are fairly high. Uh, if anything, I think the one to, one to one is is probably a perfect size, especially with where it's priced now. Wouldn't be shocked, uh, you know, if, if Bitcoin uh, has another burst to the upside and goes up to forty or fifty thousand, you know, it could possibly see a partial contract or a mini contract like you've seen, uh, like we have SPX options that are one tenth the size. So, uh, wouldn't be surprised if we went the other way. Um, how can I pull? Can uh, got a question about spot. Bitcoin pricing to put on TWS, and I'm going to skip that and let Cynthia get that in a minute. How's that, Cynthia? I can hear her nodding from Connecticut. Um, got a couple of questions about options. Uh, we, uh, if if we start to see viable uh, volume in the futures, I believe options would be something uh, that we would follow up with. Um, Avril is asking. Do you plan other related derivatives such as VIX for Bitcoin? I would, my, my head would explode if we could have Bitcoin VIX. It's like my two worlds coming together at that moment. Um, what you actually need for a volatility index, which is the first thing that you would need to have a volatility market on Bitcoin, would be a viable option market. So if we offer, uh, let's, it, it, lots of ifs here. If we op offer options on Bitcoin and they start to do very good volume or uh, volume where you can get a, volatil uh, a volatility index quote from that pricing and, and have a lot of confidence in that, uh, I, I'm certain we would do a Bitcoin VIX. It, it, it just for for SIBO, that that would just that that would make an awful lot of sense being the the exchange that created the volatility index. Um, what are the chances of offering Ether futures? Um, you know, I I know we have uh, wow same question twice. Um, the um, the ether futures, uh, you know, it's it, it's a possibility. I know that expanding into other parts of the cryptocurrency market is part of the long term plan here. I honestly, it, it's because because I'm really not. Sometimes I forget what I'm allowed to talk about, and not allowed to talk about because I'm out in public for us so much. They don't share any of the good stuff with me, and, and it's probably for my own good. So when I say I'd guess, it really is uh, me being a guess. Uh, Rill is asking, is there a COT report for XBT? Heck, yes, there is. Um, we are in the COT report. Um, I actually, uh, we've, we, the, our futures contracts 
our Bitcoin futures contracts have shown up in the commitment of traders report every week, every week since they have launched. The other futures contract based on Bitcoin cannot say that. Uh, you actually have to have 20 unique reporting entities involved in a futures contract for it to show up in the COT report. And our contract uh, is in the COT report. The other exchanges is not, which means that ours has got a wider number of users. I can say that with an awful lot of confidence. But yeah, there is a COT report because the numbers are so small right now. Uh, there, there have been a couple of stories about uh, the COT report data with XBT. Uh, I would like to get a few more weeks before uh, start to have an awful lot of judgment about what we're seeing there. I do think that uh, they were saying that the, the positions are net short uh, from non-hedgers, which would not is not surprising to me, uh, just because that, that's one of the big differences between the futures and spot. It's actually a little bit easier to put on a short position than with, uh, with spot Bitcoin. So there's a COT report for the XBT futures where we are definitely in there. Um, what is the purpose of Gemini involvement when SIBO only settles in USD? Um, Gemini is uh, one of the uh, many places that you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Uh, we are using Gemini as our partner here uh, really because they are a regulated entity and we're very comfortable with their uh, their their settlement process and uh, the, the the way that they go about soliciting orders to get um, a, a, actually to create a liquidity event, which will be our um, how our um, futures contracts will be settled. Uh, so that's why uh, that's why we're involved with Gemini is um, really to have uh, under underlying settlement process. Uh, technically, our futures are based on uh, the Gemini price during the day but if you can uh, if right now you could buy uh, a bitcoin uh, $50 less on coinbase than at gemini and short a futures contract against it um in reality uh during the trading day our futures are based on the whole bitcoin ecosystem but we do settle uh into the gemini auction price uh, if Bitcoin goes to zero, will you be paid? Yes, you will be paid if Bitcoin goes to zero and you are short. Uh, you would, um, the, the Options Clearing Corp, uh, which is our clearing entity for uh, options and VIX futures, is actually the, uh, the, the entity that monitors counterparty risk for Bitcoin futures. And um, if the, the, they man, they've, we've never had a counterparty problem in the past, in the 40 plus years that OCC has been monitoring things. And we have had different stocks go to zero and people that own puts on those stocks who end up being compensated or made whole in cash. So um, I'm certain that there is a, a process that will make sure that um, that you don't have to worry about counterparty risk when you're short a Bitcoin futures contract. Uh, there's a question about order and entering an order outside of regular trading hours. So I'm going to leave that one for Cynthia. Uh, oh, somebody's asking if I'm going to tell you how to go about buying and selling, uh, and they left. Uh, I I work for the exchange. I can't tell you how to buy and sell. I can tell you how to go about trading them. But um, so about trading them. Uh, we had a question about Pedifree. Uh, he, he has, as, as Cynthia actually answered the question, uh, but, but I will put my two cents in there as well. Uh, Pettifree was really, I feel like he was talking about, uh, firms that may not, uh, manage their risk properly with something that is so volatile. Uh, I think that, uh, through the, uh, the process with the CFTC and the way that, uh, interactive brokers is handling it that that they are handling the uh, the risk associated with this um, properly and I'm working with lots of questions um, uh, somebody's asked did I ask about uh, initial coin offerings no I'm, we're just sticking with uh, uh, Bitcoin and Mark Shore Mark I'm coming to your webcast on Friday um, any plans for a Bitcoin volatility index? Um, Mark Shore is a, a, a 
one of the smarter volatility guys out there, and he's going to be talking about V stocks later this week at Interactive Brokers. So uh, I, I consider him my V stocks counterpart with respect to VIX. Uh, and I think uh, I think I've worked my way back, and now I'm working my I'm going back to where questions had come out before. Um, Uh, the Gemini webinar will be added to the webcast list, correct, Cynthia? And I'm asking you to come back on now, too. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm here. I figured you were throwing it over to me. Um, <laughs> actually, Russell, um, <clears throat> it is listed on our website. Um, okay. What I'm going to do is let me – well, first of all, I'm going to bring the web page up, and then I'm going to go back in and grab the controls from you for just a moment so that I can show everyone how to find uh, that webinar. Now, <clears throat> let me get in here, and I'm going to take the presenter role back. Okay. So now, um, everyone, I've just loaded on my screen um, <clears throat> where you can find uh, the upcoming uh, webinar with Gemini. Notice here it is underneath the education menu. If you go into the webinar section, you'll find there's quite a bit of information, including um, <clears throat> previously recorded webinars, upcoming webinars, but simply go to the live webinars and type in Gemini in the um, search field, and it will bring you right to that page. It's coming up on uh, February 2nd. Right now, we're still discussing the time frame. I do have it tentatively set for 12 o'clock, which is when all of our webinars run. But um, if you do sign up and we do have a change uh, in the time that day, I'll be notifying everyone of that. So I um, did want you to know it's there and available. By the way, um, since Mark is also on today's event, <laughs> I do <laughs> I'm going to, and thank you very much, but we'll go ahead and add Mark's event um, as well here. So what I'm going to do, uh, let me see, I may have to uh, refresh my page. Let me simply refresh the page. We'll go into the education menu, into the webinars, and you'll be able, let's see, here it comes, uh, going into the live webinars, you'll be able to find, um, notice here it is with Mark Shore coming up on Friday at noon. So if you're interested in trading European volatility with the V-Stocks, join us then. <laughs> and thanks for joining us now, Mark. Um, now, let me see, there were a couple of other questions that had come up as far as interactive brokers and trading the uh, Bitcoin. What I am going to do is pull over, uh, you'll see that I do have now uh, the description, our contract description. So here you can find the different futures. This is, notice here, the underlying. You'll need to add GXBT um, <clears throat> uh, to pull up those quotes. And notice here are the, rate, are the uh, trading hours and then also the total available hours. If you do want to chart the information um, in the PWS charts, simply in the chart parameter box setup, whether you it pops up when you go to launch a chart or you can do it from within a chart underneath the end edit menu, there's chart parameters. And that box that's there will, um, at the very bottom right-hand corner, you'll be able to put a check mark in the box to show data outside of regular trading hours. Um, so to see the data outside of the regular trading session, simply put a check mark there and you'll be able to view the chart information as well. Um, okay, was there another question, Russell? Um, over? Up toward the, to, gosh almighty, there was something about after hours trading. Ah, and it that's was, uh, you can see the trade, okay. Yeah, you can see other. it. Um, now, if you are going to trade, make sure that you change the order type from a day order to a um, good till cancel order. That's something else, too, because the day order will be canceled by the system at um, uh, 15 or 3.15 cent, uh, Central Time uh, once those regular trading hours do end. So just make sure that you put it good till cancel, and you should be able to uh, transmit those trades as well. Um, well, oh, this was the question. Somebody asked if they could pull uh, other oh. quotes into TW. I knew that, and, and uh, Jake just repeated it. 
So. Yeah, and I see, Jake, I have it highlighted on my screen here uh, about pulling Coinbase in as an alternative um, cash exchange. Well, if it's not listed on the IB website, what you will need to do is um, add that to our new features poll. Um, I was looking around, and it looks like the link may have dropped off the website, but I do want to let's, um, let me spell it. Notice that if you do go into the new features poll, it's listed here um, and simply uh, access it. Uh, notice you can go ahead and access from here. And my suggestion is coming down to the different products and add an item here um, for any of those exchanges. We do have to have a relationship with the um, with Coinbase, for example, to be able to pull those quotes in. So um, that will have to be set up by IB's Market Data Services. If it's not there already, please make that suggestion and. Um, uh, or even submit that through your message center as well um, in account management. So a couple of ways that you can notify us that that's something that you would like to see and that will initiate um, the investigation with IV. So for right now, I don't believe Coinbase um, is available, uh, but you can also utilize IB's APIs if you've got access to Coinbase. Um, so did want to mention that as a possibility um, as well. Well, Russell, thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> very, very informative. Um, and uh, thank you for today's presentation. I want to thank all of you, too, for joining us uh, for today's event. And with a quick reminder, we have been recording today's session, and you'll all get a direct link to today's recorded playback uh, shortly after today's event ends. So if you do want to come back and review the concepts that Russell discussed, I'll also have a copy of his slides available in the follow-up message that will go out um, <clears throat> just as soon as I get today's recording uploaded or compiled and uploaded to our servers, you'll get that direct link. So with that, we are going to conclude our event today. Thank you all for uh, joining us and <clears throat> have a great rest of your day. You can all exit using the X in the upper right-hand corner of the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Thanks all for joining and have a great day. And thank you, Russell. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.